The Mandel Fleming model allows us to assess the effects of monetary and physical policy on exchange rates. But before we can assess the effects, we need to know how mobile capital is across borders. If capital mobility is high, then global investors can easily move money from one country to another in response to interest rate changes or perceived risk. In this case, the main driver of exchange rate movements will be capital flows. So when you see a change in policy, uh, you would need to ask how will this affect interest rate differentials and how quickly will investors move capital in or out. On the other hand, if capital mobility is low, investors cannot freely shift funds internationally. That means exchange rate changes will be driven less by capital markets and more by trade flows. Here, the focus should be on how policies alter exports, imports, and the balance of payments through trade rather than through financial flows. And always keep in mind, check the level of capital mobility within the case. Okay, if they mention high mobility, we will watch capital flows. If they mention low mobility, we would then uh, keep in mind that trade flows will dominate. Okay, and of course, uh, if they, they would say that, okay, the country has, let's say, high capital mobility, or they would say that the country has a free flow of capital or unrestricted flow of capital, okay, that would signify here high capital mobility. Okay, if it's a low capital mobility, they could mention that there are strict capital controls or they have a restrictive uh, flow of capital, so that would signify low capital mobility. When capital mobility is high, physical policy affects exchange rates through interest rate movements and the capital flows that follow. With expansionary physical policy, meaning higher government spending or lower taxes or both, the budget deficit increases, and that means the government has to issue bonds to finance the budget deficit. With more borrowing, the interest rates would be pushed up. Higher domestic interest rates attract foreign capital inflows from lower yielding markets. This results in a higher demand for domestic currency, and we will see an appreciation of the domestic currency. With restrictive fiscal policy, there will be reduced government spending or higher taxes, and that means the budget deficit would shrink, the, the government would have less issuance of bonds, and interest rates fall, prompting capital to flow out toward higher yielding markets abroad. And this leads to a depreciation of the domestic currency. Now, let's look at monetary policy under high capital mobility. Expansionary monetary policy lowers interest rates. As domestic yields decline, investors seek better returns abroad, causing capital outflows. This weakens the domestic currency, leading to depreciation. Restrictive monetary policy does the opposite. Higher interest rates attract capital from abroad, as investors shift funds from lower yielding markets into the domestic economy. This inflow strengthens the domestic currency, resulting in appreciation. So when we combine the different potential policies, then we would get this table. If both are expansionary, okay, then uh, the expansionary physical policy would lead to a higher interest rate, okay, while uh, the monetary policy would drive the rates down. So I'll just put the, right, the rates will drop and for expansionary physical policy, the rates would go up. Okay, so since the impact uh, on the interest rates are opposite, so this result cancels out, leaving the exchange rate outcome indeterminate so, or inconclusive. Now, if both are restrictive, okay, uh, for restrictive monetary policy, we'll have higher interest rates, okay, and for restrictive physical policy, we would have lower interest rates. Again, the results are opposite of one another, so it cancels out, so we would not be able to tell whether the domestic currency would appreciate or depreciate. So it's indeterminate. Now, of course, if you have an expansionary monetary policy where the rates drop, and you have a restrictive physical policy where the rates drop as well, then the conclusion is very clear. The domestic currency would depreciate. Okay, so again, when rates drop under high capital mobility,
the investors would shift their capital to other countries that pays higher yields so the domestic currency weakens. And if you have a restrictive monetary policy and an expansionary physical policy, the rates go up, which means that you will see an inflow of capital and domestic currency strengthens or appreciates. Now, when capital mobility is low, okay, exchange rates are driven mainly by trade flows rather than financial flows. Now, this time we think in terms of exports and imports. With expansionary physical policy, meaning again higher government spending or lower taxes, domestic demand increases. And this leads to an increase in imports, worsening the trade balance. Okay, and as a result, the domestic currency depreciates. With restrictive physical policy, okay, where there's reduced government spending or higher taxes, demand falls. And when demand falls, imports decrease, improving the trade balance. And this strengthens the domestic currency, leading to an appreciation. So think about spending. Okay, with more spending, there would be it will lead to more imports relative to exports. And when there is more imports, that means these are uh, pay foreign currency payables. And if the foreign currency payables becomes larger and larger, there is a higher risk. Okay, within the economy, and that is what causes the depreciation of the domestic currency because investors would feel. Are uh, very cautious about, I mean, the trade balance worsening, and they may exit their investments in that country. Now, looking at uh, the monetary policy, with expansionary monetary policy, interest rates fall, and that encourages more investment and consumer spending because no one would keep the money in the bank, right? They'll take the money out and spend. So when the more they spend, of course, the higher the imports would be. And the higher the imports, the worse the trade balance would be, and that leads to a depreciation in domestic currency. On the other hand, if you have a restrictive monetary policy, uh, we would have higher interest rates. Okay, and with high interest rates, people would spend less, they would invest less in their business, and they would keep the money in the bank to earn higher interest. And that means with less spending, okay, there would be less imports. So the trade balance would improve and the domestic currency appreciates. Okay, so think from a trade angle, think of imports versus exports, but mainly is imports and imports is driven by uh, spending and the spending would depend on the change in the interest rate. Okay, so we don't focus too much on capital flows here. So if we were to score, we were to uh, summarize all this together. So this time around, when you have a restrictive monetary policy, and a restrictive physical policy. So in this case, the imports would drop because of lower spending. Okay, and that means your domestic currency appreciates okay, because of lower imports or there's because of improvements in the trade balance. When both policies are expansionary, there'll be more spending and more imports. So rising imports leads to worse, uh, worsening in the trade balance. So your domestic currency depreciates. So if you have an expansionary monetary policy and a restrictive physical policy, so these two would have contradicting effects on imports because expansionary monetary policy would result in higher imports while restrictive physical policy would result in lower imports. So the effect cancels out. So the result on the exchange rate is indeterminate. For restrictive monetary policy, where this would lead to lower imports, and if you combine it with expansionary physical policy, where we would see an increase in imports. Okay, so again, the effects of these two would cancel out. Okay, so we wouldn't be able to conclude on the impact on the exchange rates. That's why it's very important to determine at the beginning, check the case to see if capital mobility is high or low, because uh, that would determine whether we focus more on capital flows or trade flows.